A problem for anyone considering a trip to Sri Lanka is narrowing down the list of things to do. There are countless opportunities for unique, thrilling, and adventurous experiences, which is why in today's video, I'll be sharing 12 of the highlights from my month-long trip around the country. In no particular order, the first can't-miss activity is to swim with wild sea turtles at Turtle Beach in Hikadua. This is not a paid activity or a tour, and you can find sea turtles at Turtle Beach year-round. I do recommend you go as close to sunrise as possible as there will be fewer tourists and the turtles will swim around you. The water is calm and the turtles hang out in shallow areas, so this is an activity that you can participate in regardless of your ocean confidence. Also grab some seaweed and they will eat it right out of your hand. Make sure you also block off a day to check out Gaul. Gaul is a charming town and UNESCO World Heritage Site surrounded by a wall built by the Dutch in the 17th century. You can book a tour if you're interested in the history but we just walked around the town and around the Gaul Fort on our own. It's a little touristy, but you can also find some great spots to eat and shop. One thing to note is that it is very hot in Sri Lanka, and the day that we visited Gaul was full sun. I ended up jumping into the ocean fully clothed. The heat can definitely take away from the experience if you aren't prepared with lots of water, sunscreen, an umbrella, and maybe even a swimsuit. A more appropriate sunny day activity is to try surfing. Now, I am not a strong surfer, and in fact, I had never successfully surfed before visiting Walagama in Sri Lanka. You'll find a ton of surf instructors on the beach, and for around $20, you can hire an instructor, as well as rent a board and a wetsuit to then spend two hours learning the basics and heading out into the ocean. You will likely have no problem standing up on your first lesson with the big, stable, beginner surfboards that they provide. After just one lesson, I was completely hooked and would love to head back to Wellagama and rent a board on my own to continue practicing. It's extremely safe and very fun. This next activity I almost didn't include on this list because it's not a typical Sri Lanka tourist bucket list attraction. The Community Museum outside of Hikadua is a small photo museum educating on the devastation of the 2004 Boxing Day tsunami. This was a significant tragedy, with a death toll of over 30,000. This is not a happy experience, but the people running the museum are incredibly knowledgeable and this ended up being one of my most memorable days. And this was just another eye-opener that even in recent history the country has gone through tremendous loss and conflict. Which is something that you would never know based on the positive experience as a tourist. Another really unique thing to do in Sri Lanka is to visit the snake farm just north of Wellagama. Now we almost skipped this because it wasn't along our coastal route and I didn't have high expectations for a $10 snake farm or any snake farm, to be honest. Over the period of an hour, our host, a snake doctor, Vipal, who came from a long line of snake doctors, brought out snake after snake. I freaked out just a little when the show started with him bringing out a white cobra and placing it on the ground a few feet in front of us. I freaked out a lot when he came out next with a crate. Just a side note, I almost cancelled the entire trip to Sri Lanka when I found out that the country is known for having the most venomous snakes of any country in the world, with the crate being one of the most deadly. Vipal was very knowledgeable and passionate on all things snakes, as well as generous with his time and excited to tell us everything he possibly could. Even if you don't like snakes, I certainly do not. Still consider visiting this snake farm as Vipal's stories are absolutely fascinating and the photo opportunities are incredible. Even more unique than visiting a snake farm is the opportunity to drive a tuk-tuk in Sri Lanka. 
We rented a tuk-tuk for the entire time that we were in the country and drove ourselves from place to place. Not only did this give us the freedom to explore on our own schedule, but it also was a whole experience in itself. The highlights were driving the B35 highway, which is essentially a self-drive safari, and then the surprise look, the double take, and finally, the smile as the locals watch two foreigners drive past in a tuk-tuk. Definitely a conversation starter. And while your entire trip is going to feel like one big safari, it is still worth booking a structured safari tour. It's a thrill to drive around in the safari trucks and also to be able to ask questions and learn more about the animals. There are a few safari options, including Udawale and Yala National Park. We did a day trip at Yala National Park, where you're certain to see a bunch of different birds, monkeys, elephants, and it's also one of the few places in the world where you have a chance at spotting a wild leopard. Now, don't get your hopes too high. Leopard sightings are still pretty rare. I'd say we got pretty lucky. For a complete change of scenery, you'll definitely want to schedule a few days in Ella, a small mountain town in central Sri Lanka most popular for hiking. You'll feel like you're in a different country if you come from the coast. The temperature, terrain and scenery is completely different. Two hikes you shouldn't miss are Ella Rock and Little Adams Peak. Both are gorgeous, but do expect a relatively challenging uphill hike for a few hours. You don't need to be a trained hiker or rock climber, but you do need to be in decent physical shape if you want to enjoy the trip. You probably saw this one coming, but a must-do activity in Sri Lanka is to ride the train. There are tracks running all over the country, but the most famous segment is the Candy to Ella route due to the scenery. You will probably also like the Nine Arches Bridge in Ella. You can find the train schedules online and plan your visit around a train coming to watch it go over the bridge. You can walk along the bridge, but keep in mind that it's still being used and there are several times a day where the train will pass over the bridge, so it's definitely better to watch from a distance. Doing Adam Peak's pilgrimage is another can't-miss activity in Sri Lanka that I cannot recommend highly enough. Adams Peak is considered to be the most sacred place in the country and believed to be where Adam first touched Earth. Reaching Adams Peak is a mission. You will climb over 5,000 steps, so while there is no technical skill involved, it's certainly a workout. I enjoyed this trek way more than I was expecting. It wasn't even about the view at the top. It was pretty misty and you couldn't see much, to be honest. But it was very fulfilling and there's this sense of community like you're a part of something bigger while you're climbing. Adam's Peak holds so much meaning to the Sri Lankan people and it's beautiful to see that. You'll climb alongside locals and foreigners alike while also being amazed by the number of elderly Sri Lankan men and women that are making the trek barefoot. The most visited spot in all of Sri Lanka has got to be the Sigiriya Rock Fortress. It's known by the locals as the eighth wonder in the world and is famous for the palace ruins that you'll find on the top of this 200 meter rock. It may take you two to four hours to get to the top, but it's the most popular site for a reason, so you won't regret it. Many people also do enjoy hiking the nearby Rock Pitarangala. The view of the rock fortress from this hike is absolutely breathtaking, especially at sunset. Finally, while Sri Lanka is full of adventure, there are also so many opportunities to slow down, learn something new, and indulge in the food. Make sure you take some time to take advantage of the self-care opportunities. Consider a drop-in yoga class on the beach or in the mountains, getting a massage, touring a tea plantation, or even trying a cooking class. Trust me when I say that Sri Lankan cuisine is not going to disappoint. I feel like number 13 on this list should be eat the food. Eat all the food. Sri Lanka truly has something for everyone and I would love to know in the comments down below which experience stood out most to you. 
It would be great if you could give this video a thumbs up as it helps it reach more people. And then I also hope you'll subscribe as I'll be coming out with more Sri Lanka videos covering some of the practical aspects of traveling there, like cost, planning, and safety. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.